Hey, Professor Yerby here again. Just wanted to go over a few things with lab budget planning. So, when you're designing your lab, and what I'll have on the screen here while I'm, while I'm speaking with you are just a few different uh, images of different labs. But uh, while you're planning your lab, you'll want to break down the cost because cost is likely going to be one of your major limiting factors, especially if you're setting this lab up uh, for yourself for academic purposes, or if you want to go into consulting uh, as an or as a digital forensics investigator or even data recovery specialist, that one's much easier to get into at a much lower cost and and easier to get into with less certifications and education. But but a lot of this is just going to really cost a lot. So some of the different things that you will want to consider if we look at this this first picture here on the um, upper left hand of the screen, you can see there's all kinds of devices, all types of pieces of hardware. So hardware is going to be one of your your big uh, expense items. Did forensic specific hardware uh, can be pretty pricey. Um, hopefully the college will be building a miniature forensics lab sometime in the next year or so. And um, the way we're doing that is through a good bit of money through a federal grant. Um, so we can see here there are several uh, field response kits in this, this picture here. Also another big cost is software. So forensic software as you've already seen some of the examples that you've used, we're using free trials but if you go out and you look at the prices for these software for the software it can be pretty pricey and uh, usually those uh, software licenses have to be updated annually and technology being what it is and forensics usually dealing with crimes uh, there's usually a good bit of updates that we need to keep current with every you know every year there's something new there's some some way that the the bad guy is trying to get away from the good guy right uh, facility space so so just looking at some of these just the, the, the sheer space and where you're going to locate your facility, who's going to use it, what types of activities, what types of security you're going to have in, in play. Uh, if you're maybe you're uh, starting your own firm and you're just investigating some civil cases of a spouse cheating on another spouse and you have it in your your home, well the the opposing attorney is likely to bring into question where is this stuff stored how can you be sure that it's not been tampered with you know so so you need to have these these kinds of things prepared ahead of time so that you don't bring up unnecessary um, problems I, I always say I, I think I'll say this several times throughout the semester uh, a good forensics examiner should not have to go to court and that's just my opinion. There are going to be other forensics experts who have much more experience than I do who will say that's nonsense. Uh, the best forensics examiner is going to find himself in a courtroom often. So take that for however you want to. I think if you do your job correctly the first time, you write the report, submit it to the attorneys, maybe do a little explaining, you don't need to be in the courtroom. Um, some other things that we need to worry about are training personnel so how many people are going to work at your shop and how many people are you willing to put through all of the different trainings for all of the different software and hardware devices and all the different you know new mobile technology everything uh, you have to keep up with the changes in technology so so that's pretty much what I wanted to cover with the the budget uh, let me see if there's one or two other things I wanted to add in here um, remind students that the lab manager is responsible for planning the lab budget so if you you have the position of being the lab manager uh, of a forensics lab then the, the uh, responsibility for you to plan that budget could uh, could very likely fall into your um, your realm of responsibilities use a uniform crime report to illustrate the use of statistics when planning a lab budget if the report shows that most computers use Microsoft Windows Family OS's you should expect more crimes committed 
with any of these OS's. Your lab should have sufficient resources to handle these cases. So that the statement I just read to you there is saying that, hey, take a look at what types of cases you're handling. Are you primarily in a mobile phone investigation type unit? Well, you should probably have the tools and the resources and the training to do those types of cases. Are you primarily investigating computers? Uh, and are those primarily Windows machines? Well, you should be an expert on those machines. Uh, so a lot of times what you'll see even within the forensics community is someone will get some piece of evidence that they are not an expert on and so what they'll do is they'll kind of, kind of subcontract they'll say hey I'm looking for somebody that's an expert with Blackberry cell phones text messaging uh, because they need to forensically recover those Blackberry messenger messengers and nobody in the world uses Blackberry anymore uh, except for really weird people I hope you're not one of them just kidding that's a joke to one of my friends who will not even watch this video um, but let's see make sure that you keep track of your hardware and your software uh, any problems that you report during la the previous year uh, and then you always have to keep an eye on what technology is doing next so and lastly a budget uh, doing forensics uh, can be pretty time consuming so depending on how you're running your lab or where you're working uh, you'll really need to take into account time if you're running your own lab and you're your own boss then you still need to account for your time uh, especially if you're billing your customers for time but there's a good bit of time in forensics investigations where you hit go or you hit capture and you wait Sometimes this, this wait is kind of like the back in the old dial-up days when you would try to download some songs from Napster, or I mean back up your copies from Napster. You would hit download, go to sleep, wake up the next morning, see what you caught. Well, sometimes forensics can be that way. Sometimes you acquire an image, and these images are so large, they're getting larger and larger with, with people storing more and more data. And you wait, you leave for overnight, for a day you come back and you hope that it didn't fail and then once you have your capture then you can really get to work and start analyzing what's going on but that's really what I wanted to go into as far as uh, budget of a lab so hopefully you've enjoyed this and these uh, little pictures over here to the to this side I think I don't know to one of these sides has been interesting enough to keep you watching the video. So thanks and have a great day.